Thinking about the environment, this is a wind farm in Pincher Creek, here in Alberta. Our oil-rich province derives more power from wind turbines than anywhere else in Canada. When considering alternative fuel sources, what are some of the questions you should ask? Are there environmentally harmful waste products or byproducts? Carbon dioxide is a product of hydrocarbon combustion. Whether it's coal-fired power stations or natural gas-powered turbines, carbon dioxide is a product that contributes to the collection of greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere, increasing Earth's surface temperatures. Natural gas combustion, though, produces half the amount of carbon dioxide than coal combustion, a consideration in fuel choice. Combustion processes that form oxides, such as nitrogen oxide, mixes with water in the air that fall back to earth as acid rain. This changes the pH of the ground, destroying plants and trees and the natural habitats of animals. Nuclear fission is considered by many to be the power source of the future. The small amounts of nuclear waste created by these newer power plants leave some people to wonder if any nuclear waste at all is still too much. And the earthquake in Japan and the resulting catastrophic damage to the Fukushima Daiichi fission reactor has left many worrying about how safe this technology is. As a side note, the heat content of a fuel is the amount of energy released per kilogram. Heat content as well as environmental factors are important considerations for fuel choice. Is obtaining or harnessing the fuel harmful to the environment? Oil wells and strip coal mines destroy habitat. Wind turbines create significant noise pollution. Even hydroelectric power plants cause disruptions in surrounding ecosystems just by being there coal, oil, and natural gas that took millions of years for nature to produce will be effectively gone once it's used up. Solar energy and wind energy and wave energy will be around for a very long time and so are clearly renewable energy resources. You can burn wood and plant more trees, but there's an associated disruption to the environmental health of the ecosystem, including the disruption of native species habitats. And yet the new Grand Prairie Eco Power Center uses wood waste to co-generate electricity and steam for use in nearby sawmills. The government of Alberta is buying some of its electricity from the Eco Power Center. A lot of Canada's energy requirements depends on fossil fuels. In Alberta, though, it's as high as 97%. Fossil fuels in Alberta are not just consumed, but also makes up for 70% of all international exports in 2003. One in six Albertans are employed in the energy sector. So simply to stop using fossil fuels and instead use, say, wind turbines would be a very serious detriment to Alberta's economy. Because provincial, federal, and world leaders now recognize the harmful effects of fossil fuel consumption on the environment, they have taken steps toward investing billions of dollars into alternative energy resources and into gradually changing the way energy is both produced and consumed. In this way, economies remain healthy while the environment is improved. Reaction Pathways in the engines of these racing cars, a hugely exothermic and very fast reaction occurs involving gasoline and oxygen. By contrast, a very slow reaction occurs with oxygen, again, but this time with iron. The change in the amount of reactants consumed or products generated over time is called the reaction rate. So why do some reactions seem to occur so imperceptibly slowly, while others seem to take place instantly? Why does the internal combustion engine seem to require a spark to allow the reaction to proceed, but the rusting does not? What we're going to look at next are activation energies and catalysts. Many chemists believe that what causes reactions to occur are the collisions of reactants. This is referred to as collision theory. 
but not every collision forms a product. The physical orientation of one reactant relative to the other reactant slows the reaction rate. The reactants must also collide with enough energy to form the product particles. The activation energy of a reaction is the minimum collision energy required for a successful reaction. If heat is applied to the system, the added kinetic energy of the molecules will cause more collisions, and the reaction rate will increase. In this exothermic reaction, the activation energy of the forward reaction is shown on the potential energy diagram as the energy required for the collisions between the reactants to form products. The net change in enthalpy between the reactants and products does not consider the activation energy. The activation energy for the reverse reaction is significantly larger as would be expected in an exothermic reaction, since it includes both the change in enthalpy and the activation energy of the forward reaction. In this endothermic reaction, the activation energy of the forward reaction is understandably high, since endothermic reactions require a larger input of energy than is released. A general rule is, endothermic or exothermic reactions with low activation energies proceed more quickly and more slowly the higher the activation energy. The reason why gasoline doesn't spontaneously explode into carbon dioxide and water vapor is because of the activation energy. This is provided by a spark in the combustion engine sufficient enough to provide the activation energy for a few molecules of oxygen and gasoline. The gasoline continues to burn because the energy released during combustion provides the activation energy for other gasoline and oxygen molecules. It's worth noting that a pre in a previous slide in this unit, I have suggested that the peak of the activation energy curve represents the elements the reactants have decomposed into prior to forming their products. It's a useful way to visualize things, but not at all accurate. The transitional species at the peak are actually highly unstable activated complexes. A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a reaction without being consumed by the reaction. It does this by providing an alternative pathway with a smaller activation energy. This enables more reactants to react and the reaction rate is faster. In this potential energy diagram, we see a comparison between a catalyzed reaction and a non-catalyzed reaction. The reactants are the same and the products are the same. Even the enthalpy change between the reactants and the products is the same. The activation energy of the catalyzed reaction is less than the non-catalyzed reaction. The frequency of collisions then is higher because less heat is needed as collision energy.